Greetings all, Last Outrider here, bringing you the next part of the Blood Angel story, Psychic Storm. After the success of the Blood Angel's initial assault, even Dante was surprised at the speed with which the hive mind struck back. In the span of mere minutes, the swarm was regrouping within the ruins, and a new and terrible psychic presence stalked among them. Mephiston was the first to feel it, his keen, esoteric senses detecting the approaching shadow within the background storm of alien whispers. Acknowledging his warning, Dante pulled the Blood Angels back towards the port's fortified southern gate, ordering them to dig in and make ready. Moments later, a hulking trio of malceptors lumbered out of the ruins, surrounded by shoals of floating psyker beasts. The air around these tyranids hummed and shimmered, and no battle brother that looked upon them could deny the terrible presence of the hive mind walked among them. In the wake of the alien psychers came fresh waves of scuttling creatures, reinvigorated and spurred on by the iron will of the psyker beasts. Dante ordered all fire concentrated upon the hulking psychic horrors, and a storm of shells, bolts, and blasts rained down upon the creatures. However, almost every round fell short, exploding in flashes of psychic energy upon the invisible shield projected by the beasts. Then, the Blood Angels were forced to shift their aim to the more immediate threat. As a rolling tide of fanged creatures bore down upon them, the air was filled with the hiss of alien beasts and the roar of chain swords as both sides met. This time, however, the power of the alien psychers tipped the odds in the Tyranids' favor. Gaunts fought on with mindless fury, clawing over their broodmates to get at the blood angels. Coils of dark energy lanced out from the leader beasts to send space marines to their knees, blood leaking from the rents in their helmets. When Dante led a charge against the creatures, they turned their attentions to him, lancing tendrils of power at his mind. Only centuries of psycho-conditioning held the Tyranids' mental assault at bay. Even so, the chapter master faltered, slowed, as if running underwater, as he tried desperately to get close enough to the creatures to strike. From across the battlefield, Mephiston saw the beasts turn upon Dante and moved to aid his lord. Supported by Epistolary Martellos, Mephiston turned his formidable mind to tearing apart the Malceptor's psychic domination. As the battle raged outside the fire-ringed port, an epic battle of wills unfolded between Mephiston and the trio of psychic Tyranid psychers. Bolts of ruby light warred with the twisting tendrils of shadow as the two enemies clashed. At first, the chief librarian seemed to be besting the beasts, 
spears of bloody fire and waves of crimson force crashed into the Tyranids. Several of the closest floating Psyker beasts screamed and perished as Mephiston's power touched them. And by degrees, the warp field around the creatures weakened. And then, the full attention of the mind death turned upon Mephiston. And the monstrous alien trio combined their powers. Every blood angel upon the field felt the psychic shriek which rolled out from the beasts. Even though it was directed squarely at the chief librarian, battle brothers clenched their teeth in agony or let out incoherent yells as their minds were ravaged. Still, their pain was but the barest fraction of what Mephiston felt as the psychic bolt crashed into him. The chief librarian's mind was filled with a cacophony of monstrous alien thoughts. Any blood angel but Mephiston would have perished under the onslaught their consciousness burnt away like cobwebs before a flame. Only the chief librarian's indomitable will kept him alive. The same control that had seen him master the black rage, allowing him to cling to his sanity. Though Mephiston did not fall, his power was broken. As powerful as the chief librarian was, his abilities were like a candle held against the fires of a star when compared with the enormous power of the hive mind. However, Mephiston's battle with the mind death gave Dante the chance he needed. Whilst the Malceptors focused their attentions upon the chief librarian, the chapter master and his guard charged into the nearest beast. Up close, the Axe Mortalis did its work, and Dante drove his weapon deep into the pulsing cranium of a Psyker beast. With its death, a baleful scream echoed across the battlefield, and the remaining psychic creatures retreated into the ruins, the swarm rushing in to hold back their enemies. This was not the turning point Dante had hoped for, however. As the Blood Angels surged forward to crush the Tyranid leadership, the teeming alien broods shifted around them, recovering and attacking once more. Yard by yard, the space marines found themselves being pushed back towards the port gates. Though the surviving creatures of the mine death had retreated into cover, shoals of lesser leader beasts herded the chitinous hordes forward. Soon, the ruined avenues were piled with alien corpses and slick with steaming Xenos blood. Drifts and mounds of multi-limbed bodies thick beneath the space marines' feet. Yet still, the creatures came. Slowing at first, but with gathering momentum, the Tyranids pushed the invaders back towards the flaming moat. Dante's brothers rallied around the company standard, the Blood Angels focusing their defense in its shadow. However, in all his years, Dante had rarely seen a foe so determined and so vicious, and he knew that without the support of his bridgehead on Asphodex, would soon be overrun. 
however, just as the commander was about to summon his first company reserves. The thunder of basilisk fire joined the din of battle, and a rolling barrage crashed amongst the aliens. Deafening explosions crept towards the line of ruins, and great geysers of debris and mangled Xenos bodies were hurled into the air. The defenders of Port Helios were finally making themselves known. Dante was quick to capitalize on this sudden advantage, and before the Tyranids could close the holes in their formation, the Blood Angels counterattacked hard. Isolated broods and beasts were torn apart, and the Sanguinary Guard hacked their way through the wounded alien assault, further sundering it. The Basculus gunners kept up their supporting barrage, great shells hammering into knots of scuttling beasts, and soon the alien tide dwindled to a trickle. The Tyranids had been driven back for now. Yet, this reprieve could not last long. And now the narrative. Dante looked across the carnage before him. A sea of mangled alien bodies stretching for hundreds of yards in all directions. Here and there, a crimson or golden-armored form lay amongst the Xenos. Sanguinary priests moved amongst the dead, ministering to these fallen heroes. As he beheld this vision of death, the commander could feel the weight of centuries upon him. Memories of other times and other battles. However, nothing compared to this. Today, Dante had witnessed tyrannid threats beyond even his experience. Creatures he had never encountered. Evidence of survival instincts among the alien leadership. Rarely did Tyranids retreat, nor did they quit a battle until their entire strength had been expended. The trio of Psyker Beasts were indeed something new. The Sanguinary Priests assured Dante that Mephiston would recover from his psychic duel with the hive mind. However, it was a chilling foreshadowing of what might await the chapter on Baal, should the Leviathan's rampant development be allowed to continue. Indeed, what horrors might the Tyranids spawn if they consumed the Cryptus system? adding not just trillions of tons of biomass to their fleet, but also the collective combat experience of untold billion weapon beasts. Dante was drawn from his thoughts by the sound of marching footsteps. Looking up, he saw a delegation of Astra Militarum officers descending from the port gates. Two Cadians, supporting a limping figure between them. As they drew near, the wounded man offered Dante a weak salute, shrugging off his helpers with apparent irritation. General de Hurst, Cadian 158th, the man said, his voice a wounded and weary croak. Dante considered the general for a moment, taking in the torn and blood-stained uniform, 
the gray, deeply lined skin, and horribly bloodshot eyes. This officer had been through something truly terrible. Yet he still had held Port Helos for days against all the odds. Whatever had happened to him, Dante recognized a host as a hero, a warrior that the commander could respect. How many survivors remain on Asphodex, General? Dante asked, turning his head to the ruined battlefield once more. De Rost swayed for a moment. One of his men reached out a concerned hand to support him. The general's response, when it came, hinted at a bottomless well of exhaustion and despair, held in check through willpower alone. Just us, my lord. We are the last ones. <laughs> and next, next time we shall find the dark tide. Until then, bye.